what is up guys welcome back to the channel so today I'm going to be giving you guys my one month to two month review of the iPad 2020 Pro this is the 12.9 inch and I did get it during the back to school uh, sale from Apple where I think it was slightly cheaper sorry where I think it was slightly cheaper I don't remember by how much but I did do a video and it was like like a hundred bucks cheaper or something something like that a hundred bucks cheaper and you get the AirPods Pro for $99 as well. So I ended up doing that deal. I picked it up in store because I didn't want to wait for like uh, two weeks shipping or three weeks shipping and having to deal with all that. So I basically did that and now I have been using it solid solidly for over a month now. And I'm just going to give you guys my, uh, I guess, my initial impression slash review of the iPad. So, um... And whether it's worth it in 2020 when compared to possibly the 2018 model or the 2017 model, I think, or the yeah, the 27 2017 model, which was the one I previously had. So, uh, talking about the 2017 model or the the one, the 10.5 inch back back when they had that, uh, I was coming from a smaller screen, so uh, this 12.9 inch was a huge leap for me. But seeing as how I was gonna use the my my de my goal was to be able to use it with this keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, of course. That was gonna be the goal. So I wanted as much much uh, screen to make it as close to a laptop replacement as I could. So I have the 2016 MacBook Pro, uh, the 13 inch model, and I have used that for over four years now. And I think it's a really good solid computer, but. Uh, for this uh, semester coming up and the rest of my semesters at uh, college, I wanted to use the iPad as my digital note-taking device and as my typing device and possibly as my editing device for videos and stuff like that, web browsing, all the stuff. I just didn't want to use the laptop anymore. I don't know why. It still works perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. From from So from the 10.5 inch that I had before, this 12.9 inch is incredibly massive at the for the first day i unboxed it i think i mentioned in the video that i thought it was huge at first i was kind of scared because i thought i would not be able to adjust to the screen size but over the last couple weeks and months i have been able to adjust to the massive screen size so i don't have the 11 inch model to compare but i did see it in store and it is a slightly slightly smaller and probably more portable and uh, it is for sure lighter though but let's uh, I'm, I want to talk to you guys about comparing both models of the iPad so like the 2018 model and the 2020 model to see which you guys uh, basically would would be more beneficial for you so coming from the 10.5 inch I personally believe that it was a good upgrade time because it was probably going to be another two years before they update the 2020 model. So I'm kind of glad I did that right now at the beginning. I had been using the 2017 model for like, yeah, probably like uh, three years. Th yeah, three years I had been using it and it served me right. It was fantastic and stuff like that. It was perfect. It worked uh, It worked fine, but I thought it was definitely time to upgrade and especially during that um back to school summer sale so I decided to jump on that and I'm really glad I did so comparing it to the 2018 model the model that looks almost identical to it to this uh, 2020 model the differences are the big differences are the the camera in the back and basically other than that the rest is internal so let me just go through some of the things that are different now in in this model compared to the 2018 model which will likely be uh, the deciding factor for many of you and whether you pick up this 2020 model which probably I think it retails for 1099 here let me check in the Apple website because I have been finding deals on the 2018 model after I bought this one I had been finding a lot of deals on the on the the 2018 models yeah, so it retails for $9.99 on the regular Apple Store, but if you go through the educational site, you you think I think you get it for $8.99, yeah. So it drops it a hundred bucks. 
but $8.99 or $9.99, whichever way you get it, is still a huge amount of money for an iPad. Uh, when compared to other deals that I've seen on the 2018 model, you can get the 5 hot. I've seen deals on on this website I use, I use Slick Deals. I was able to find a 2018 model, 12.9 uh, inch, 512 gigs with the cellular connection for I think 850 or something like that. So there's always deals on these iPads and especially now since they're trying to clear inventory for these newer iPads, you're gonna be finding a lot of sales and deals on these uh, older iPads which are still perfectly fine and uh, honestly work very well and there's not too many differences but that's what I'm gonna be doing this video about, about the differences between specifically the 2018 and the 2020 to see whether it's worth it for you and just my thoughts about how I have been liking it so far. So. Let's start with the with the differences. So between the 2020 model and this is talking about the 12.9 inch because I don't have the 11 inch, so I can't really talk about it. The difference in weight is uh, the 2020 model is 12. Point, no, the 2020 model is 1.41 pounds, and the 2018 one is 1.39 pounds. Not much of a difference. It does feel pretty light. Uh, I have been using it with the Magic Keyboard case, so I rarely take it out and have it like this because I'm too scared to even hold it because I feel like I'm going to bend it and I don't want to bend it, so I basically only have it in this case. And it it feels pretty heavy, but it's honestly, you can one hand this for hours and not feel it, uh, not feel too much of a strain on your hand. So in terms of screen resolution, you basically have the same resolution between this uh, 2020 model and the 2018 model. Both will have iPad OS, of course. The only difference is that the base model, the one I got, the Wi-Fi model, uh, the 999 version, it starts out at 128 gigs, whereas the iPad 2018 version starts out at 64. So there is no uh, 128 model. So you basically start with half the storage of this model if you go with the uh, 2018 model. So instead of 60, uh, instead of 128, you would get 64 gigs on the 2018 model. And internally, there are more changes. There are the processor. So the 2018 model has the A12X Bionic chip, and this 2020 model has the Apple A12Z Bionic chip, which is I personally feel like the performance on both of them is perfectly fine, but on the 2018 model, some, I think the majority of them, of the base models have four gigs of RAM, and only like the highest memory um, versions have the six, gig, six gigs of RAM, whereas this 2020 iPad, all of the versions come with six gigs of RAM. So let me flip over and switch over to the cameras to show you guys. Personally, I don't do any iPad photography because I would feel like a total crazy person walking around with my huge uh, screen recording and stuff like that. But if you are into that, uh, this 2020 model is definitely the one for you. So the, uh, this 2020 model has uh, dual 12 megapixel and 10 megapixel ultra wide cameras and it has LiDAR, which I don't really understand. I think it's like for the 3D and the virtual things. For the apps and stuff like that but i rarely use the camera on this thing so i probably really am not the best to talk about it but it is significantly better than the than the last year's because uh the 2018 model because that one just has a 12 megapixel rear and a 7 megapixel front so it also has better uh, recording capabilities with 4k at 60 fps and 1080p at 20 at 1080p at 240 fps Whereas the 2018 model can only do 720 at 240 FPS and 4K at 60 FPS. Both use Bluetooth 5.0, USB-C, none of them have fingerprint sensor or are water resistant. And as for battery, this model has, uh, the 2020 model has a slightly smaller uh, battery. But Apple claims that it's just as good as the 2018 model with both getting an average of around 10 hours. So take that uh, with a grain of salt because it's always not the the case because there's they do those taste tests with optim optimal optimal usage so the it's gonna vary between your usage but overall I have been finding that my iPad uh, with the uh, Magic Smart Keyboard could probably last a good seven to nine hours. And that is with the magic uh, keyboard which has been known to have a lot of drain issues but I'll talk to 
I'll talk about that when I do the Magic Keyboard review and stuff like that. But honestly, guys, I have been enjoying the heck out of this iPad. Uh, I'll be doing, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to be doing a review of the pencil because the pencil in itself is literally just a pencil. So might as well throw that into here because it is basically a, a, the accessory that everyone tries to buy with the with the iPad and it was the one I got as well first so I like what coming from a 10.5 inch older one uh, you basically had to stick this into the port right here into the charging port and it looks so ridiculous I hated it uh, partly the reason why I didn't use it too much and I hated the it was rounded the whole way through whereas compared to this you can charge it on the side as well as the 2018 model you can charge it on the side right here you can uh, it basically pairs through that and it has in order to charge right here they have added like a like a smooth edge it's no longer a fully uh, circular so it does have like a slight grip here which is very very nice when uh, drawing or using notes and I am gonna be using this for uh, my college semester and basically I have everything I need in here I have been able to download my my books right here I have my uh, the website my my school uses I have uh, my note-taking app my drawing app I have a couple note-taking apps I have been uh, experimenting with notion lately uh, I'll probably be doing a review about that and how I use it for school uh, notability and good notes are the two ones the two main ones that I have found that are basically the top tier note-taking apps on the iPad Pro so you have good notes right here it's more of like a journal based uh where you flip the pages and get um basically like a notebook where you put your your subjects and stuff like that and you write into those notebooks notability is more of you put a subject and you have like a one long continuously going down page which i personally don't know i still haven't found the perfect one for me and uh, I, I used good notes for the majority of my last semester or uh, when I would use my 10.5 inch in the end so uh, it re honestly really depends on you guys like if you guys feel like you need a iPad Pro uh, personally I can recommend this one I have been uh, an avid fan of the iPad line ever since they introduced these n bigger models the 10.5 the 12 point something those were always really cool and it, it really helps if you're a student because honestly it will depend what type of student you are because I know you can't run some of those uh, programs on here like engineering programs and stuff like that I'm not really knowledgeable in that so I don't really know but as for like a student that uh, just needs to write emails uh, use uh, Google Docs and stuff like that you basically get by with just using this and you pair this with the with the Apple Pencil, you basically have your note-taking device and you put this on the iPad as well, the Magic Keyboard, you basically have your laptop replacement. I'm going to be doing more like how I use my iPad back to school uh, later on when it gets closer to school, but right now I still don't have any of my classes and I don't have anything like set up. But I really feel like this iPad is going to be a dream to use over the next uh, semesters, that my last semesters that I have in college. And I'm really excited to use it. I, I really, really, really have been enjoying it. It is a steep price. And there are ways to get it slightly cheaper for it than $8.99. Uh, website Swapla usually has deals on it. But uh, since it's a fairly new uh, tablet with only like a couple months of being out, I doubt there's going to be much less than 100 bucks on there. Uh, if you find something for less than a hundred bucks, you basically beat out the Apple Store. So I would recommend getting it through Swappa. But if you find nothing less than a hundred on discount, probably go through the Apple Store because you get a brand new one. It's sealed. You have the the receipt and everything like that, and it's just more secured, I guess. Which I have used Swappa, which is really secure over the past like five years, and I've always never had an issue with it but I would personally rather buy my iPad straight from Apple so just in case anything happens I can just send it back to them or whatever but uh, highly recommend it but it is a steep price like I continue to mention like this is not a cheap device it is 
basically a grand, if not more, with taxes and everything. You know, and you combine these accessories, you combine the pencil that's 129, basically 150 with taxes in California. The Magic Keyboard was 349, but if you buy it again through the Apple Educational Store, you get like 20 bucks off or something like that, making it 299, I think it was. Uh, but with taxes, it basically goes to 350 in California because you know that California tax, and you're basically around 1500 to 1600 dollars depending on what model you choose for your iPad, which is kind of crazy because you could I think you can get an entry level MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro entry level as well for that type of price, which is kind of crazy or like a secondhand uh, older MacBook, which is just a good laptop and stuff like that. But if if this device suits your needs, I would highly recommend it. It's definitely my go-to device now. I barely pick up my laptop anymore. I feel like uh, I rather just type on the on the magic keyboard or or just browse through here. Like if I want to go take some notes, like I'll I'll give you guys an example. Let's see. You you for here you can basically set up a notebook or a folder. A uh, notebook would just be for a single subject, a folder, you can put multiple notebooks in it. Uh, let's just do a notebook. You can create your your style, your your type of paper you like, and your your design and stuff like that. And I just basically like uh, regular, just squared paper. Pull out your pencil and uh, choose your pen sizes or your pen types. You have ballpoint, uh, fountain, and brush. I basically always go ball. And you choose your pen color and your width of your of your pen. I tr always try to go with uh, 0 0.5 because that's what I use in real life. So I try to mimic that as much as possible. So that's what I would use. So let me just be like uh, YouTube ideas right here, and you choose different color. This also has a double feature like this slanted edge where you put it to charge. You double tap it and it, it switches to the eraser, eraser tool and then you double tap it again and it goes back to the writing tool which is pretty neat. You didn't have that in the older Apple Pencil. You can also customize that in the settings as well so if you wanted to do something else. I think there's like a couple options you can do there so let me try uh, uh, make, make more videos. Alright. <laughs> My handwriting is terrible and my spelling is horrible. But see, let me fix it with the eraser just like that. And we have it. Oh my god, why can't I spell it right? Oh my. Uh, videos. There we go. So basically, like, you can take notes here. On Notability, I know that you can record the lecture as well. I'm not sure if a Good Notes 5 has it yet. But. Uh, that was just like a little example how people use their iPad or how I would use it this next coming semester. And since we're all going all digitally online, uh, personally for my school, I feel like it's going to be uh, how I'm going to be taking notes and how I'm going to be uh, reading my textbooks as well. Uh, but for many of you guys, I know you guys have several different uses, several different ways you guys would use it. You can use it as your laptop replacement, your notebook replacement, or just like a tablet, or all three, which is what I would try to use uh, it as well, which is the most efficient for me because uh, I don't, I can go from laptop to, to tablet in an instant, from work to play, from play to work, and overall I'm just really happy I was able to get this iPad. I'm really grateful, so... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this quick little like review or like should you buy iPad 2020 in 2020 review or something like that. I don't know what I'll call it, but it's just my initial thoughts and uh, impressions on this device and whether you should buy this one or an older one or just do not buy it completely. Depends on your financial situation and whether you actually need an iPad or you're just better off with a laptop like I mentioned. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you guys want to do. I still have to do a review on the Apple Magic Keyboard, these AirPods Pro. Maybe do a video on how I'm going to set up my classes for uh, online and what apps I would use. But please just guys let me know. Uh, thank you guys for all subscribing and liking the videos. It means a ton to me. I hope you guys have a safe and good um, rest of your week.
and I will be trying to post regularly on Monday. So that's when I'm going to be doing on my uploads. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys, hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.